Lewis. Please give a warm welcome for Kai. So hi everyone. Uh, this talk is actually meant to be for a 20 minutes talk, but I will put everything together in 10 minutes. So. Uh, <laughs> Make it twice as fast, it's easy. Uh, my name is Kai Röder and I'm from Frankfurt working for a company uh, uh, placed in Mainz, Germany uh, that does software for global trade and logistics. And uh, I'm also a maintainer of Storybook.js. Uh, first question, who, who heard of Storybook.js? Oh, wow, many people. Uh, back in, at the meetup in Frankfurt, uh, there were just five hands out of 40 pe people. So this looks like 50%, maybe more. Uh, cool. So, um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter if you want to, maybe you don't want to. Uh, and I want to talk about the benefits of a design system and how a storybook can improve your daily work. Um, I hope I don't uh, tell you something new, because everyone seems to know kind of a storybook. Um, a storybook is a tool to build a component library. It's not necessarily, you, you don't need to build a whole design system uh, with it, but you can if you want to, or if you just want to build a component library, you can just build a component library. But let's talk about this later. So, uh, first things first, a couple of questions. Uh, who has ever created a form? Any framework, HTML, JS? Okay, plain easy. Okay, multi-step form like wizard or shopping cart. Okay. And uh, who had some difficulty um, developing a component that was very, very deep. So you needed to do three clicks to get to it, change the line of code, hot reload, reload kicks in, you have to repeat those three steps again. So <laughs> thought about it. I had two. And uh, that's uh, why I look for a tool that uh, solves this problem for me. Um, but uh, first I want to talk about why, in general, I think at least component development isn't always easy. So if you think of a VIP offer component, uh, it's only visible to VIP users, so it depends on state, maybe even server state, because it's a VIP user and we validate on server, right? Not on client. And, uh, and uh, think of, of it and you have to change the style of it. So first you have to be logged in. You, have, you need an infrastructure that allows you to be logged in and you need to be a VIP user. So one way could be to create a VIP user for yourself in your test environment, do your job. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's a good, w good way to do it that way because depending on infrastructure, if it's down and or you cannot authenticate for some reason, it's, it slows you down in your process. Um, the other way, would be to just uh, manipulate this uh, one VIP offer component and make it available, available for everyone. So uh, just do your changes, push it, and push it to production, and make everyone a VIP user because you forgot to revert your changes you did to the VIP offer component. Sure, they cannot uh, do anything with it because it's uh, still server-side validation, but um, yeah. Um, think of a component that is only visible for a short amount of time. So like an info message, you've su successfully saved uh, something and uh, you have to change the style. I've found myself very often in the last couple of years where I just clicked a button, saw this thing for five seconds, ah, it doesn't look good, uh, change something, be as fast as possible to, to get it right and uh, hopefully uh, someday I, I've done my job. And um, both of these scenarios might sound constructed to some of you, but remember last time a lint rule prevented you from pushing or building uh, a code with a debugging statement or console log statements in it, and you forgot to revert these changes. So it's, it's um, for me, it's a common thing that you can forget, uh, forget things, and I don't want to bother about it uh, while I uh, actually develop a component. And uh, the third thing is um, actually related to the question I've asked before that uh, sometimes you have to develop a component that is buried very deep and you have to go over these two steps with validation over and over again just to uh, edit your third step and all of these things are really <coughs> troublesome in my opinion and the one solution there's always one solution uh, is isolated component development and uh, what makes it special is that Imagine you have, have, have a container where you just have a bootstrap Angular and 
just one component in it and you can write down this one component. Uh, what's cool about this is that you can uh, mock, mock the state actually. So if you need a VIP user, just do it. You're not inside your app with your business logic. You are in a, in a closed container and uh, can do whatever you want. And uh, for me, I found out in the past year I've using Storybook that uh, you start to focus more on the component API itself because if you take this one component and put it inside your app and develop it, you already build a relation between at least the parent component and the component itself and you can do fancy stuff with ViewChild and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you have uh, in an isolated environment to start to think about your inputs and outputs and about things like dump components, smart components, uh, etc. And uh, finally you can uh, put them together in a component library like the left uh, like on the left side, uh, our company's uh, component library or Angular Material, um, PrimeNG, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's really cool to have this one place for your team or for the whole world, uh, depends on what you're doing, uh, that shows what, what your framework is capable of. So, and uh, this is where Storybook kicks in uh, because it's a tool that out of the box offers you uh, the possibility to build such a component library by, by just being besides your project and uh, doesn't modify your project itself. I, I will, if we have enough time, I will show a bit of code uh, soon. So um, imagine you want to develop a lib tabs component. So a component like this one where you can uh, switch between tabs and uh, see, okay, my content changed. And how cool would it be to actually be enabled to modify the inputs of your component with controls on the bottom where you can say, okay, let's see how it looks on the, on the bottom or uh, on the left side. And um, why not check accessibility? There's actually a tool that checks accessibility for you if, if your component is accessible for other users. And another cool thing is, um, you also can add nodes as Markdown. What we've uh, found out in our team that uh, is that uh, designers actually they they don't can uh, they can't code, but uh, they can learn to write Markdown files. So this is just a Markdown file uh, they can add to your component with some some history behind when to use this particular component, when not to, and uh, yeah. And if you haven't already noticed, I did the whole presentation inside Storybook. So um, this is my tabs component. I did everything in my slide component I've created for this presentation. It has a couple of uh, knobs, uh, like putting things on the left side, etc. So uh, let's dive into the code for two minutes and uh, check out my slide component. So. It's basically just my, is it, is it, do I need to zoom? That's fine, I think. Uh, it's a basic Angular component uh, with a couple of inputs. And um, besides this one, I got a stories directory with a slide stories. So inside this one, I can just add stories or let's collapse this. I write a story about components this is the main navigation name you can see on the left side, this one. And uh, you want to write a story with knobs, the thing you saw on the bottom. So you can add add-ons you wrote yourself or use existing add-ons. And um, then we want to add a story to our, our components uh, navigation. And uh, I called it slide because it's about a uh, slides component. And what's in it, it's just a, a template, an Angular template, and a bunch of properties. So with this template, you can just do things like, like Angular do, does things, uh, using inputs, x, y, text align, and width. And uh, they can be applied from outside. So you can just uh, define properties, and by uh, saying Boolean, you say, okay, you want to have a Boolean uh, property and by, by default it should be false and X, Y, and et cetera, et cetera. And also there's the thing, uh, module metadata you should be familiar with. It's just 
Angular. So you can declare components if you want. You can uh, use entry components, providers. So you can build simple components, dumb components, but you can also do a bunch of cooler things uh, like like uh, a table component with uh, lots of uh, child components in it. And uh, um, yeah, I think I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just one, th uh, I'm at 10 minutes 30. Do I have 30 seconds? Yes. Okay. Um, just one thing about the configuration because I got uh, asked this at the meetup at Frankfurt. So it's basically just a CLI SB in it and it installs in your existing project and notices, ah, it's an Angular project because Storybook supports 10 plus frameworks currently. And uh, what you do is just require everything from my projects di directory with a dot .stories .ts, so the story file I showed you before. And that's it, that's a pre-created uh, pre file and your storybook should be uh, ready to go. You can also define uh, add-ons for linking stories, writing notes with markdown, using knobs, uh, manipulate the free viewport for testing it in responsive uh, modes. And yeah, that's it. Thank you.